In this video, I'm gonna be updating this bathroom vanity for under $60 and in one day. There are a few things that I need to do, but I'm gonna focus on just the vanity cabinets themselves by giving them a coat of paint. It can be slightly tricky, but it's very simple. So let me give you all the tips you need in order to knock it out on your own. Step one is gonna be to protect your floor. So I just grabbed some random cardboard and laid it out. I couldn't find one piece to fit the whole thing, but three will do. I'm not gonna be spraying in here, so you don't have to worry about protecting the entire thing. It's just up near the cabinet where I'm gonna be painting. In order to keep the cardboard from slipping around, I just laid down some masking tape to put it all together. And then I also taped off the walls where the cabinet intersects with it, just to keep the cabinet paint from getting on the wall. Now the next step is gonna to be to remove the drawer fronts, but before you do that, make a map of it. I do this by a very crude drawing on a piece of paper where I then number everything, not only the door faces, but also the drawers. Now, as I remove things, I'm gonna place that same corresponding number on the inside. On the drawers, it can go immediately on the back in a Sharpie typically, but on the doors, these are gonna get painted on both the front and the back. So whenever I remove the hinges, I put it into the recess there, then put a small piece of tape on it so I won't paint over it. Okay, so this is the recess and then so looking at this little map, this door is gonna be here. Since I marked this as number one, I'm gonna mark this as number one. One. And then I'm gonna put a piece of tape because it never fails that I'm gonna paint over it. I'm just gonna set that aside for right now. And since I'm gonna be painting the face frames, the whole hinge needs to come off. I'm gonna put an up arrow in between the screw holes because then that's gonna be hidden and this is drawer five. Now the next step is all about trying to prep the carcass in order to get good adhesion for the primer, which will be the next step. I'm gonna go through with a cleaner first and clean all of the surfaces. One of the main things that will prevent the paint from sticking is grease or dirt and grime. So get something that will cut all of that and put it on a cloth and simply wipe everything down. Now that I have all of the grime off, I'm gonna go through and rough up whatever clear coat finish is on the cabinets. I recommend using a grit that's 120 or 150. If you use something a little bit more coarse then the scratch marks can show through the paint. As you can see, it doesn't take much. You're not trying to remove it all. You just wanna rough it up so that the primer has something to stick to. In this step, you wanna hit any surface that you want to paint, including trim. You can use something like a sanding sponge, or if you have a Palm ROS, then that also works. Again, just make sure you check the grid of the sandpaper. If you're gonna be sanding, don't forget I have a 10% off coupon for my favorite stealth mask respirator which offers the highest protection against all airborne particles with up to 99.9% .9 filtration efficiency. One last thing, sharp corners create a weak point in paint. So I go through and do at least one or two passes on every 90 degree to eliminate the weak point. Let me pause real quick and thank this video sponsor, which is Liquid IV. Between DIY projects, running the woodshed, and traveling cross country for TV, it can be easy for me to put self-care on the back burner. And that's why Liquid IV has become my go-to for proper hydration. Liquid IV is a healthy electrolyte drink mix, perfect for staying hydrated. Liquid IV created hydration multiplier and immune system with cutting edge blend of vitamin C, zinc, and Wellmune, designed to maintain and strengthen the immune system. Drinking one Liquid IV can hydrate you faster than water alone. So I can stay hydrated even on my busiest days. The convenient single serve sticks make it easy to pack and use on the go, making them great for traveling. It also helps that each packet is bursting with the fresh tangerine flavor that tastes really good. If you wanna try the new hydration multiplier and immune support, check out the link in my description or nationwide at Walmart. Don't forget to use the code APRIL for 25% off. The next thing I'm gonna do is go through and look for any blemishes such as indents like these here. And I'm gonna be filling these in or they will definitely show through the paint. I'm going with DAP's premium wood filler. This is a water-based three-in-one filler and sealer that is very easy to use and quick to dry. Also, if you don't want the natural grain showing through the paint, you could use this on every surface because it is a grain filler as well. I'm using a putty knife to work them into every single divot. 
And since I'm painting mine, this isn't really relevant, but if you wanna stain yours, know that you can mix stains and pigments to create an exact color match. It's fast drying, so I just had to let that set up for a little bit before I can sand it, and it does sand very easily. You repeat all of the same steps on the faces. I made a very quick workbench outside on some sawhorses using a bifolding holler core door. These things are about $40, but they make an excellent workbench anywhere you need one. The next thing you want to do is thoroughly clean off all of the sawdust that you just created. And I did this with a shot back, but if you have an air compressor, that would also work. If you don't have either one of those, then a damp cloth. Now let's go ahead and get ready for priming. You can buy some of those triangle standoffs for painting. However, a tip for you to make your own is to grab some scrap. You can see I just have some plywood here. Create a standoff from the table and shoot a brad nail through each square. This is a very quick and easy way to create as many standoffs as you need, but that's just my preference. Next, I'm gonna go through and put down a coat of primer on all of these things. You can find paint with a paint and primer in one. However, if you're refinishing like I am and not going down to raw wood, then I do recommend doing a primer step separate from paint. For the doors, I'm gonna be spraying those. And I'm using the Flexio 3500 made by Wagner. If you're looking for a spray gun, then I definitely recommend this one. There's so many different settings on this that it really allows you to control everything about how you're spraying. The front of the nozzle will of course change the fan blade from vertical to horizontal. There's a way that you can change the width of that fan blade. A one to 12 setting that will help you control the flow control as well as a variable speed air po power control on the very top lot of adjustability regardless of what project you're tackling. If you're going to be going with a color other than white for your final color, then I recommend going with a gray primer over white. And this will give you much better coverage on your paint color whenever you get to that stage. It's just a little bit easier to cover up than bright white. Actually, as I'm going through and flipping these, I should save doing the edges for the second side because I'm just leaving fingerprints. So, look or don't, you can learn from my experience. In the back side now. I always start with whatever is going to be the underside or back first, just because it will have three pinpoints from being flipped over. Sprayer makes quick work of this job. Something else you could do when you're spraying to get in all the nook and crannies is to choose a direction on your first pass, but then do the opposite direction on your second pass. After getting done with the doors, went to the inside and switched to a brush and roller to do the body of the cabinets. I'm using a microfiber roller because it leaves a smoother finish than other types. However, if it's not smooth enough for you, you could do the bulk majority of the painting with the roller, but then come back and back brush it with the paintbrush. I went ahead and called in my mom for reinforcements, which just adds a little bit more fun to a job like this. All right, after letting the primer thoroughly dry, next up was painting them. And it's all the same steps here that I did before, where I used the sprayer for all of the doors and then the roller and brush for the body. Now for a paint, I definitely recommend getting something with a higher gloss. This will make wiping down the cabinets in the future a lot easier. I went ahead and went with a dark color choice here because there's so much white in my space. If you're gonna be tackling this project, I do recommend spending the money and buying a higher quality paint. It's gonna last longer, it's gonna give you a better finish and cabinets like, like these in the bathroom do have some wear and tear on them. They get wet, they get kicked. So this is one of those times that spending 10 extra dollars is gonna pay off. It was really humid the day I was painting, so I sprayed the doors outside, but then I moved them inside overnight to fully cure and dry. The next day, now I was able to rip off the tape on the back side in order to see those numbers that I put at the very beginning. I could line that up with the map that I made of my cabinet before taking them apart and then start reattaching them. Now a tip for you, since the holes are already drilled, I recommend getting the screws started on both and that way you have a little gap to look in between the drawer front and the drawer to make sure that it's aligning properly. And then it's very quick and easy to reattach everything. That's it for you on the, on the faux drawers. The attachment clips on mine broke off. So I simply grabbed some right angle brackets, screwed them onto the face frame, and this gave me an attachment method for these faux fronts. When you go to attach the doors, it's way easier if you attach the hinge first to the face frame. Then you can pop the cabinet door onto the hinge, attach it the rest of the way. Okay, and then the last thing to do on the cabinets is I installed some drawer stops. These are cheap little bumpers that just prevent the door from slamming. 
and I placed one per door. Now it's just a matter of cleaning up the mess and looking at the job. You'll notice that in this space, I went ahead and took down that old outdated mirror and installed two individually framed ones and then also updated the light fixture. I aimed to do this project in a single day, but with all of the drying time, it did run over into two, but not bad for two days worth of work. I still need to do something about the countertop, but hey, these three things drastically made over this bathroom in a very short amount of time and very, very simple. If this has been on your to-do list, whether it be in the bathroom or kitchen, then I hope that this video has helped you out. Check out my other video where I remodeled a different bathroom in two days, including doing floor and updated the shower tiling. I'll leave you a link down in the description. That's it for this one, guys. I will see you on whatever I'm building next. Actually, as I'm going through and flipping these, I should save doing the edges for the second side because I'm just leaving fingerprints. So, Walk or don't, you can learn from my experience. You said last time to do the edges after you flip it. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Be sure to also check out my website because I sell lots of useful things, such as these fraction and decimal charts. They're not only cool shop decor, but they're also functional. If you're interested in getting yours, you can click right here.